okay so let us start with an example of a very simple system so what is a system a very simple definition sir it has input output something which takes an input and gives an output depending on the characteristics of the system right yes sir and in control systems we are usually concerned with the characteristics of the system yes sir different properties so the main uh, thing that we use to quantify or identify or represent a system is called transfer function of the system right and it's usually taken in the time domain or some other domain sir in frequency domain yes in the frequency or laplace domain you can call it either so this is a simple cruise control system basically a car that is driving along a road as you can see so there are two forces acting on the a uh, car right the driving force f and the frictional force bv why is it bv because the frictional force is uh, proportional to the velocity right we already know that yes sir so if you write the uh, equation using newton's law unbalanced force ma or resultant force ma is equal to f minus bv so this is the equation that you get so f force acceleration and velocity in this case are obviously all functions of time while mass is constant and the proportionality constant b that's also constant so now our aim is to find the transfer function of the system from starting from its basic equation right so transfer function what is the definition of transfer function mathematical definition output by input yeah output by input so in this system what is the input the force yeah it's obviously the force because that is the input that we are giving right from our own uh, this is the input basically and the output that we are getting is the result that is being produced so in this case the output is the it can be considered to be the acceleration or it can be considered to be the velocity so in this or it can be considered to be the displacement so in this case there can be multiple outputs and depending on the output the transfer function of the system will change so if we assume the velocity to be the output so that means that the original equation has at so in the original equation you can only have the uh, input and the output otherwise you will not be able to get the transfer function right so you have to uh, change all the non input and non output terms to the in terms of the input or the output so in this and m and b are constant so you don't need to change them obviously you only have to change the at in terms of either the force or the velocity so it's obviously can be written in terms of the velocity because we know that acceleration is what rate of change of velocity dv by dt right yes sir so yes. this is the equation that you'll get now we already we you already mentioned and we already know that transfer functions is, are are usually expressed in the laplace domain or frequency domain right so just use the laplace transform of this equation so ft is converted to fs vt is converted to vs but what about dv by dt so you know do you know that what uh, differentiation in the time domain how does it translate to the laplace domain yes by multiplication with s right yes sir so this becomes s multiplied by vs now you just shuffle this equation output by input velocity by force right Velocity yes, of output, the force, the driving force of the car that we are giving, or the engine, is the input. So this is the transfer function, one by m s plus v. Now, why is this transfer function important? Using this transfer function, we can uh, observe the characteristics of the system for various types of inputs. Right? We can give any input and just test how the system will respond. So in this lab, we'll be concerned with testing using very simple inputs. or input so normally the simplest types of test inputs or test functions that are used to observe the characteristics are the step ramp and impulse functions right they are used as the input and the corresponding output is observed right so in this uh, today's lab we will be only observing the step response step response means basically the output when the input is a step function and what is a step function it's basically one right yes sir okay so it's basically t at time t equal to 0 it's nothing then after time t equal to 0 it becomes one 
So that is a step function and we'll be using that as the input to observe the output, which in this case is the velocity and that is the step response. If you do the inverse Laplace transform of this equation and solve in the time domain, this is the result that you'll get. If you solve the velocity, if you solve for the velocity in the time domain, taking the input, which is the force as a step function, you'll get this equation. This is the analytical solution in the time domain. So for this lab, it's not very important to know how to derive it, but you, sh you should know how to derive it. It's pretty easy. Just by using the inverse Laplace transform, taking FS as step, step, uh, step, how is step represented in the Laplace domain? One by S, right? Yes, sir. So using that and do, doing all those mathematical operations, you'll, you should get the analytical uh, solution. Velocity, when the input is a step function. Okay, so we'll be using MATLAB to observe the step response and it's very easy. So let's uh, mark our transfer function one by MS plus B. So this is our transfer function one by MS plus B. So I hope everyone has MATLAB open with them. So one by just writing it for clarity, one by MS plus B, this is the transfer function. So for this, you need to use the TF function normally. In order to use the TF function, you have to define two things from this transfer function. They are the numerator and the denominator. So in the transfer function, the numerator is obviously one in this one, right? Yes, sir. And the denominator, you have to write a matrix consisting of the coefficients of S in decreasing powers of S. So basically this MS plus B, this is basically M into S to the power one plus B into S to the power zero, right? Because S to the power zero is one. Yes, sir. So basically you can consider the coefficients in decreasing powers of S to be M and B, right? Isn't yes, it? Sir. Yes, sir. If it were something like uh, one by, if the denominator was something like MS, MS square plus two, ms square plus two, then what should be the matrix? Sir, M, M, B. M, zero, one. Uh, M, M, zero, two. M, zero, two. Why? Because this is basically m s square plus zero s one. Plus two s to the power zero, isn't it? m s square plus two, it's basically m s square plus zero into s to the power one because there is no s to the power one term and two into s to the power zero, which is two, right? So the coefficients of decreasing powers of s are m zero and two. You have to consider all of them. You cannot skip one s power. You have to consider all of them in decreasing order. You don't have to consider the upper ones like s cube s to the power four. You just have to start at the highest power and then go backwards, but you have to consider all of them, right? So this should be M02. Anyway, in our case, this is MB, which is easy. And we have to define the values of M and B. I think M was 1000. You can check your lab sheet, B is one. So denominator is M and B. So we have our new man then. So now you just have to define the transfer function using TF, G equal to TF, num comma den. It's given in the lab sheet, same thing. So this is the transfer function one by MS plus B. Right? Yes, sir. Now you can observe the step response directly using step. Very easy. So R1 is G, step G. You'll get a graph that will show the amplitude versus time. So this is the step response. That means the velocity values of the, this is basically the velocity when the input is, when the input, which is the force is a step function, right? Yes, sir. Basically velocity versus time graph, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so how can you tell looking at this graph that this is a step response? Before zero, it's zero. After zero, it is approaching one. Yeah, it is approaching one. So that is the important thing. So in most, in generally, uh, the output will try to follow the input. So in, uh, in our case, the input is one step. So the output will eventually become equal to the final value of the input, which is one. It takes some time to get there. It doesn't get there instantaneously, right? So this is the step yes, response. Sir. 
Yeah. And uh, you can also use the plot function that you already know from before. So for plot function, you need two values, right? The x-axis values and the y-axis values. So in this case, the x-axis values are the time values and the y-axis values are the velocity values, right? So yes. you can generate the x-axis and y-axis values from the step function itself. This is actually not very efficient because you're adding extra lines, but if you want to use plot, sometimes it's uh, valuable to get these values for some other manipulations. So y time, so this will give you the y, which is the velocity basically, let me write velocity time. Velocity time equal to step h. So you already saw using step h a graph is generated and that graph is generated obviously using some values, right? The y axis and the x axis values. So yes, you can sir. just obtain them using this line, velocity and time. So this will give you, oh, it was g. Now transfer function was g. So velocity time equal to step g. Now you just use plot x axis, which is time, comma, y axis, which is velocity. You'll get your step response. Let me cross it and then run it. So you get the same response. But in this case, since it's not a built in function, no y axis and x axis labels are given automatically. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Observe the step response using step or using plot. Simple stuff. The last one, you can verify the simulation by comparing with the analytical solution. So the our analytical solution was this one, right? So you can also plot using this equation itself and then verify whether they are the same. They should be the same. So for this one, let us, uh, you need to know a new thing, which is called function handle. If it's new to you, it's new. So function handle. So in MATLAB, how do you uh, write functions? So found if you in function. Uh, make a new file, name the function, same as the file name, then write the function definitions inside using the variables and whatnot, right? Yes, sir. You can also uh, write simple functions using function handle. So suppose we want to uh, write a function called y equal to x square plus five. So for that, just write y equal to, so if you write y equal to x square plus five, what will happen? Obviously an error, right? Because there is nothing x, no variable x right, has been defined. So you cannot do that. But if you type y equal to at x, first of all, now if you do this, it will signify that whatever you write next will be a function in terms of the independent variable x. So if you write y equal to at x, then write x squared plus five, x squared plus five. Now you'll get a function x squared plus five, y equal to x squared plus five. So how can you verify this is a function? So if suppose you want to find the value of y when x equal to five. So just type y five. So this will give you five squared plus five, which is 30, right? So yes. you get 30. Yes, sir. Very simple example of function handle. So let's extend this example to our analytical solution. This one. So now write the velocity function in terms of the independent variable t, which is the time. So that's very easy. You just copy this line. I'm not writing the whole function because it's already there. So this is the same as what we already described at t. This signifies that this will be a function in terms of t. And this is the function. 1 by b multiplied by 1 minus e to the power minus bt by m, right? 1 by b into 1 minus e to the power minus bt by m. So this is our function that we, that we have defined. Since this is the velocity, let's write velocity function, right? Well function equal to this. Yes, sir. You have obtained the function. Now, in order to find the values of the velocity, you need to find, uh, you need to define the values of the time first, right? Yes, sir. So you can do it manually by using time t equal to 0 0.01 up to like 5,000 seconds, or you already have your time. Can anyone tell me from where? So we already- From the step yeah. response. Yeah, from the step function itself, you already generated the time values. Let me write this one more time. This line, right? Y time equal to step G. 
so you have generated the time values from this line already so you have the time values you have your function so all you need to do right now is find the values of the velocity at those times so just type uh, suppose well well value uh, let me write velocity values velocity values equal to well function bracket time right is this line clear yes sir this is the function name in terms of time and these are the time values which is denoted by time so this will give us the velocity values now you have the velocity values and the time value so just use plot plot time comma velocity function values so this is, this should give you the step response right and it should match the previous ones and it matches the previous ones right so yes. this is how you verify that your uh, simulated results are consistent with your analytical results right is it clear yes sir any questions up to this part no sir okay so now you have to do a task very easy task should take you 2 minutes or 3 minutes or 5 minutes the task is you have to do all those all not all the things you just have to plot the step response of the same system using any method just use directly step doesn't matter plot the step response of this system same everything but you have to assume that the displacement is the output not the velocity you have to assume that the displacement is the output but not the velocity and then you have to show the step response it's defined in this part page 2 classroom task so do it and show me by sharing your screen everyone try try this so will it be a straight line hmm sorry so Even will one. it be a straight line so have you done it show can you show me sharing your yes. screen okay show me then sir done sir okay anyone can show me it's, this is not the actual task which I'll, i'll not mark this but still i hope everyone tried this one mb0 this is your denominator right so how did you obtain the transfer function what change did you make to the original equation you can share the, that share it no problem it's i was sharing but i couldn't i unmute so you couldn't what i couldn't unmute so now i can okay so x uh, so can you see yeah i can see it so it's correct so denominator is mb0 so yes, what what did you do in the transfer function so it was uh, m a t plus b v t a t becomes d uh, square x uh, double derivative yeah and v becomes uh, uh, first derivative so d square x uh, d if we laplace transform that uh, uh, yeah as... that you did it correctly but you could have done it in one line very easily so if you take a look at the last line of the transfer function 
instead of vs so velocity is obviously rate of change of displacement so dx by ds right yes sir. sorry uh, dx by dt so yes. instead of vs you can just write if you transform it to the laplace domain differentiation multiplication with s right so this yes, is sir. basically s into x yes so you don't have to start all the way from the time domain in the laplace domain just write vs as s into xs and then you'll get the output divided by the input which is xs divided by fs which is 1 by ms square plus bs plus 0 uh, yes. 1 by ms square plus bs did everyone understand how to do it no sir just convert your velocity to displacement in the transfer function then obtain displacement by force which is the transfer function yes sir and how to convert the velocity to displacement use the formula v equal to dx by dt that means uh, v vs in the laplace domain will become s multiplied by xs did everyone understand yes sir yes sir and that is how you get the st step response when the output is the displacement okay okay so you can stop now sharing Yes. Okay, so should we move on to the next part? Did everyone try it at least? Yes, sir. Okay, so next part, some MATLAB techniques. Oh, my screen is not shared. So. Okay, some MATLAB techniques using final time in step command. Uh, very easy. So. So if you look at our step response, which we did originally, step G. So it runs for how many seconds? Nine, Nine seconds, 9,000. So yeah, 9,000. It's automatically uh, given, I don't know how. So if you want to manually define the time, just write step G comma your desired time. So if you want to run this for 500 seconds, just type step G comma 500 and it will now run for 500 seconds but it will it will not have reached one because it takes uh, i think 5000 seconds to reach one so it will stop it at this part okay so the next one using s equal to tfs option so when you write the transfer function you use tf uh, num comma den right so what if you wanted to write the transfer function manually, just manually, directly? So if your transfer function is 1 by ms plus b, what if you wanted to write g equal to 1 divided by ms plus b? So obviously, it will show you an error now because you have not defined the variable, which is s. But if you write s equal to tf s, If you write this line first, it will signify that whatever you write in terms of S after this one, that uh, that will treat S as the variable of the transfer function. So if you type this line, now S is basically the transfer function variable, right? So now if you type G equal to one by MS plus B, it will generate a continuous time transfer function one by MS plus B. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Using this, you can just manually write the transfer function. So if you're confused how to do it using num and den, which you should not be because that's, I think, easier than this one. You can just write the transfer function manually. Very uh, convenient way to do it. And a brief discussion about function handle. We have already done that MATLAB class, not important. Uh, it will come later on. Discussion about structure data types in Simulink. So next we have, we'll, observe the step response using simulink so i hope everyone uh, has their matlab so if you have please open simulink and try to do it along with me if you do it along with me it might help you later on okay because you might have a lab task hello sir can you wait for a single minute or two sir yeah i'll wait okay
okay so i hope everyone has opened their simulink so this is the block diagram very simple you see your step input a step block you see the lti system which is your control system and you see two scopes to observe the input and the output right so just add these blocks if you go to sources you will find step if you go to sinks you will get scope if you can't find them just search them it will they'll come the last one lti system you can either search or you can go to control system toolbox and lti system lti uh, l the transfer functions they're all they're always used for lti systems because lti systems are very easy to denote mathematically and graphically uh, what does lti mean can anyone tell me sir linear and time invariant yeah so any system that follows these two properties the properties of linearity and time invariance that's called an lti system linearity you know what you should know what these two terms mean already linearity means what if the uh, if the input is a summation of two separate inputs the output will be the summation of the individual outputs to those inputs that is linearity right and time invariance what is time invariance if the input is shifted by a particular time interval the output will be shifted by that same time interval so these are linearity and time invariance and the system which follows both these are called lti system now anyway so this is our system so what was our system transfer function if you double click the block you can uh, define the transfer function so numerator was 1 denominator was m and b right we are observing for the velocity not the displacement so m and b it was i think mb 1001 right yes sir i think in the lab sheet it's given for the displacement you should do it for the velocity so don't give this zero now just run no i didn't connect the scope okay so if you double click the outputs uh, input scope first this is a step function right isn't it yes sir. yes sir if you double click the output scope this is your step response now is there anything odd about this one shouldn't it shouldn't it, it have been similar to the ones we uh, obtained using matlab yes sir why isn't it then so the x axis is really less the x axis is obviously really small if you take a look <coughs> it has run for only 10 seconds right Yes, sir. that means it has not ha uh, had a, uh, in enough time to reach the final value of the step which is 1 so how can you change the run time in simulink at the top if you just type it manually so we, so uh, as if i can remember correctly it uh, it took 5000 or 6000 seconds to reach 1 so let us run this for 8000 seconds then run now if you double click the scope it will resemble our original uh, step response <coughs> right <coughs> yes sir any questions i hope not no sir okay next we add a new block which is the two workspace block two workspace you can already tell by the name of this block that its function is to transfer the data from simulink to the matlab workspace so what is the matlab workspace if you go to matlab you see that any variable or value you have they'll they'll always be stored in the workspace yes sir so this is the matlab workspace so clear all your previous data for clarity 
right so the two workspace block its function is to transfer the data from mat simulink to the workspace so at that block go there and type two workspace this block to workspace now connect so suppose we want to transfer the output data so connect this block to the output signal from coming from the lti system block and if you double click this block there's a variable name sim out the default name is sim out so you can change this name to any name you want and whatever you na name you give the data will be stored in matlab under this name is it clear so since we are uh, observing the output which in uh, in this system what is the output the velocity yes velocity so for clarity let us name this velocity so this is the velocity to workspace block and oh another important thing i have to define the save format so how will the data be saved in matlab so in today's lab we'll only check two of them array and structure with type so for the array block uh, array save format select array and then okay then run now if you go back to matlab you see that two new uh, variables have been stored t out and velocity and you can already tell what they are right Yes, sir. Here it is the time, and velocity is the velocity values of the output signal, because we name the output signal uh, block to workspace block velocity. Now, how to observe the step response just from this data? Sir, plot, sir, plot. Plot the outcome of velocity, right? Yes, sir. And it should give us the same result as before. and it does give us the same result as before so the array save format very easy now if you change the save format to structure with time structure with time. okay so run this one okay we made a slight mistake not a mistake but just for clarity let's clear the previous data first so then we we can we know actually know what is the new data so again run this one now if you go back again you see t out has been generated and something called velocity has been generated but this is not a value it says one into one struct so what is a struct it's a structure So I had a question, sir. <coughs> yeah, what is it? Does this T out generate uh, normally because of the uh, two workspace function, two workspace block that we have used? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't define it uh, for like the for like for the output function. Yeah, we did not define it, but this automatically this uh, response this LTA system block will automatically generate the time. because otherwise when we uh, get the scope when we look at the scope it's velocity versus time so we are get we should get these values from somewhere right otherwise we cannot have this graph yes sir so it automatically generates the time values because without those values this graph would not exist in the first place right so if you uh, look at this this is a one into one struct structure so you should uh, you already know what structure is from your c programming course a long time ago if you double click this structure you see something uh, many things are stored inside right so can anyone tell me what you remember what a structure is as opposed to a variable so it will have multiple data types in it is a collection of variable yeah it will it's a collection of variables or collection of different data types so it can be values or string names and what not right so if you double click the velocity structure you see that there are three datas the time data again so we already have t out but we also have another time data and looking at the size 54 you can already tell that these are the same ones right you can also check 
<coughs> if you check them, you see that they are the same things. So next we have something called signals and the last one block name. So block name is not important. This is just a string, not important for us. Uh, but we have another thing called signals, which is another structure, one into one struct. So double click this structure. Inside this structure, we have three additional data, dimensions and label, not important. But if you take a look at the values, it's the same size as the time variable, right? So what is this? This is obviously the signal, right? What was the signal that we're velocity. storing? This signal, right? Which is the velocity, which is the output, right? Of this system, yes, isn't sir. it? So the values inside the signal structure, this is the velocity. These are the velocity values, right? Yes. Yes, sir. So we all we have both the velocity values and the time values, so we can also plot the step, <coughs> right? By using plot, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. But since these values are inside the structures, we have to write them in that manner. So for the time, you can directly use T out, plot T out, comma, whatever. So you can directly write T out. Or you can use the time that is inside the velocity structure, this time. So how to uh, write this one? Write your structure name first, velocity. Dot time. Dot, then write your variable that is stored inside the structure. So this time is stored inside the velocity structure. So just write velocity dot time. As for the values of the signals, very easy. Write your original structure name, which was velocity. Then we have the substructure, which was signals. So velocity dot signals. Then inside that structure, we have the values. So again, type dot, we have the values, right? Do you understand this? <coughs> yes, sir. Does anyone so, have any questions about this line? So what are dimensions? I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe it says the, it says both are, since all the data uh, are one dimensional, maybe it means that one. So if you take a look at the data uh, values and time, they're both what? One dimensional, right? Yes. They're what? column one column only maybe that's it i don't know maybe yes sir okay so if you click enter now obviously you should get the same step response that we have already obtained and we do <coughs> yes sir is it clear for everyone yes sir okay so The ex uh, these are already given in the lab sheet, the examples. Here, they have uh, the, in the lab sheet, they did, named it same out, the default name. So we have same out dot time and same out dot signals dot values and just plot t comma y. So they have taken them inside all, uh, separate variables, first of all, then plotted, same thing. So uh, some definitions are given, dimensions of the data. So as I mentioned, they are obviously that dimension, one dimensional data. Values are the dependent variable data, which was the velocity in our case. <coughs> this is the sub block, uh, sub structure inside the main structure, which was velocity, or in this case, same out. Time gives the time data, and block name is the name of the block, whatever. So, classroom task. Classroom task, you'll do it at the end. For now, leave it. Uh, discussion about Laplace and I Laplace. So, it's not very important for this lab, but so just to learn about them, just use help, help Laplace. So even the best MATLAB user in the world, the, the creator of MATLAB, even he will not be able to explain MATLAB better to you than the help function itself. Yes, right? sir. So yes. If you want to learn anything in anything about MATLAB, so personally, I sometimes I forget what very basic, very simple MATLAB functions do because it's not possible to remember everything. Yes, so sir. For that reason, the help is very useful, the help function. Right? Yes, so if sir. you want to know what Laplace does, help. 
laplace so obviously as you can tell from the name itself it will do the laplace transform yeah give you the laplace transform so uh, laplace transform is basically converting from the time domain to the frequency domain right so if you type uh, laplace suppose you want to find the laplace transform of t square for example so it should give you what is the formula does anyone know sir so 1 by so s uh, if i remember correctly at t to the power n it should be n it's factorial the to the power n plus 1 maybe so i think this should be 2 by s cube so enter obviously it's an error because we have not t is not defined right so if you look at the example itself you see that they have used this line sims a s t whatever so this sims function this will define them as symbols instead of variable with values right so t sims t write this line now if you type laplace t square it should give you 2 by s cube is it clear yes sir and i laplace so inverse laplace transform this will convert it back to the time domain so if you type i laplace uh, answer the answer that you got 2 by s cube the result should be t square right yes sir it's t square and you can also there are many other ways to do it you can check it in help again for this particular lab not very important but this might be helpful to you so if you ever why uh, if you ever get any assignments or any problems uh, to do not in the lab obviously uh, where you have to do the laplace transform and the inverse laplace transform one very easy way to check your answer is to use matlab right yes sir maybe this would have helped you in your maths course in a previous year i don't know in some semester you uh, i think you had this in your syllabus laplace yes, transform sir. so using matlab you can directly check the laplace and the inverse laplace uh, transform right okay yes, so sir. the last part of this lab before your task simulink model in the time domain so the simulink diagram that we drew previously it was in the frequency domain right using the lti system block now suppose we want to keep the system in the time domain and we want to draw in simulink okay uh, now let us uh, see a first order rc circuit so this is also a system any electrical circuit can be considered to be a system isn't it so this example this is a first order rc circuit with an input voltage source vi so for this one uh, i would explain i think i've written it down normally i would explain this using the board but whatever so this is your first order rc circuit with input voltage source vi and we have register r capacitor c is this uh, even though it's slightly blurry is it clear to everyone this pic, uh, photo yes sir yes okay so how to find the equation for this particular system very easy we use the most basic law which is kvl right so using kvl minus vi plus ir plus v not the output voltage is taken across the capacitor so use kvl then again as we learned in order to define this system we only need the output and the input so the output is the v not input is vi right but what is the extra time varying function that we do not need in the equation i it so what did we do previously we wrote this in terms of either the input or the output right yes so you have to do the same thing in this case and you already know the uh, equation for the current through a capacitor c into dv by dt isn't it yes sir so you write it equal to c into dv not by dt where v not is the voltage across the capacitor then you can manipulate this equation and this is the final line that you'll get dv not by dt equal to 1 by rc multiplied by vi minus v not this is the differential equation for the system isn't it yes sir if i told you uh, find the transfer function of the system in the frequency domain could you do it sir by using laplace transform yeah by using laplace transform it's very easy so v, dv not t by dt this will become s v not s right yes sir 
s into v not s and this will become v i s and this will become v not s and yes, then sir. you have to manipulate this equation to get v not s divided by v i s which will give you the transfer function very simple right yes sir but for this case we are only concerned with the time domain so let's keep it in the time domain for now and let's draw the simulink diagram so let's delete this i hope everyone did this part because it will be very helpful if you did this 90% of the lab task is already done okay so let me add the blocks first okay let me explain how to do it first uh, so first we have vi minus v not right so our vi it will be a step input as usual so this will be a vi and this is a subtract a subtractor block and v not we don't have any v not yet so let's keep the minus part blank for now then vi minus v not this will be multiplied with 1 by rc which is basically a constant value isn't it so you add a gain block so this signal vi minus v not it will go through a gain block which whose value will be equal to 1 by rc right yes sir and in this equation if you take the v not as the subject what will you get if you yeah. get just v not as the subject what will you get integration of the right hand side integration of the right hand side so obviously after the gain block the next stage is the integration part you add an integrator block directly and the output of the integrator block this will give you the v not and this v not is the output so you connect this v not back with the subtractor block is it clear yes sir does anyone have any questions with this one no sir okay so if you go to matlab uh, we need step subtract gain and integrator and the scope uh, okay so sources step Sink scope gain for gain go to commonly used blocks. We have the gain and also uh, oh no. and also the integrator block. It's also in the commonly used blocks. Anything else? And the subtractor block. If you go to mathematical operation math operations, you see the subtract block. So this is our block diagram, right? Yes, sir. We have our step input vi. Yeah, where was the subtractor block? Just search subtract in math operations, or if you are confused, just search in math operations. Okay, so one thing we have to change, we have to define the gain value. So our gain, what was the gain? One by rc. So suppose R is one and C is one. Both of them are one. So our overall gain should be one by R C, which is one. If you double click the gain block, keep the gain as one. Then run the simulation. So as you can see, this is the output voltage, right? The output signal which we are taking at the scope, isn't it? Yes, sir. So if you double click the scope, you'll observe the output voltage as a function of time, right? basically the step response yes sir so double click this block and this is the output voltage with respect to the time now does this resemble your typical step response as you already saw previously no sir it sorta of does but it sorta of doesn't how does it represent a step response because its final value is 1 but how does it differ so there is no transient response okay there is no curved portion at the beginning can anyone tell me why that is in this case sir because of rc value is 
and what okay why and how does that affect things so the time constant is very small so it reaches its final value very fast isn't it yes sir yes sir so if you look at the simulation time we had 8000 seconds so if you want to observe this more clearly run this for suppose 50 seconds now double click the scope now it's more clearly defined so if you take a look at the start it reaches its final value of 1 in i think 6 or 7 seconds which is very short isn't it so yes. when we ran the simulation for 8000 seconds this time interval was so small that this curve it appeared as a straight line basically yes sir clear sir right so if you want to make it even more clear uh, run this for 10 seconds so double click the scope this is the step response now as he mentioned very which is uh, uh, very observant of him rc is 1 now if you make rc like 10 that means our time constant is higher time constant higher means it will take a longer time for the system to reach the steady state value of 1 isn't it yes sir so if you make it 1 uh, sorry 10 then run if you take a look at the scope uh did i do it uh, opposite yes sir yes because it's not actually rc this is 1 by rc this gain block is actually 1 by rc right yes sir yes so if you increase so 1 by RC, that means we are decreasing rc right yes sir so, 0.1 yeah so in this case rc is 0.1 so rc is very small time constant is very small that means it will take a much shorter time to reach the steady state value and as you can see it's taking i think 1.5 seconds yes sir right yes sir okay so this was the this was our uh, first order rc circuit in the so time domain it's very simple If I tell you to do it, uh, if I tell you to draw this block diagram in the frequency domain, can you do it? Frequency domain. Yeah, I mean as before using the LTI system block. Oh yes. Very easy, right? All you have to do is find the what? Equation. Yeah, the transfer function. Yes, sir. If you find the transfer function, then you can use this exact block diagram. You just have to change the transfer function inside the LTI system block. So, right question, sir. Hmm. Follow. So, what we just did was to simulate the uh, time response of the, the step response in time domain, right, sir? Step response means with time. Otherwise, yes, how sir. will you observe the response? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. But previously, we saw when we saw found found the response in case of frequency, uh, that is using lambda. It's it's the same, sir. Yeah, Should it's it the same. same. Yeah, response is obviously in terms of time. because the step the input that you are giving step function it's a time varying function right yes sir so the output will also be time varying that is the main thing so whether it's based on frequency or time it will always be the same so no the the only thing that is different is the type of block diagram that you are drawing in this case you can either draw it in the frequency domain that means using the transfer function directly so you just have to use the lti system block or if you draw it in the time domain you keep it in the time domain and then just draw the block diagram for this equation directly okay that's it okay so should i give you the same lab task let me change the lab task for this lab not don't do this one so your task is to draw the simulating diagram for this first order rc circuit system but not in the time domain in the frequency domain or in the laplace domain using the lti system block and then observe the step response clear yes sir what will be the value of 1 by rc 1 by rc take it as 1 take 1 by rc as 1 r, r is 1 c is 1 and the equation is already given you can derive the transfer function from this equation very easily right after deriving the transfer function draw the block diagram then observe the step response show it to me so how will you submit the this lab task i'll create a section in google classroom you have to attach your screenshots in a word file your screenshots will be of your simulating diagram and the step response attach them in a word file name the word file with your student id then upload it in the google classroom section 
that I'm creating right now. You can see I'm showing you classwork and you can already start. Your time has already started. So start. It's 9.50 now in my laptop. So I'll give you, uh, how long will it give you? क्वेश्चन हेलो अब सर नॉर्मल पीएफ फंक्शन में है क्या पे क्या क्यों बोले था कमांड जो कौन यूज़ करते हैं कोई कहानी देखा है इसे जो टूल बॉक्स नहीं तो कौन ठीक है सर मैं यों ने देखा है किसी यार की यार क्या कोई नहीं मैंने तुम्हें बोलते हैं ब्लॉक टन नहीं तो मर से मुलेंग के सर एक ब्लॉक टन होगी I don't understand. If you go to the control, I don't understand the problem. So if you go to the control system toolbox, this is your LTI system. I think there is another type of LTI system in another toolbox. Maybe don't use that. So if I search, no, there is only one. In control system toolbox, use this LTI system. Anyway, so uh, the due time. Nine uh, fifty the start is so. Sir, what things do we need to attach in the doc file? Simulink diagram, step response, screenshots, nothing else. I'll give you twenty five minutes, uh, an insanely long amount of time for this task. Okay. So your time is up to ten fifteen a.m. And as you have already followed me, hopefully that block diagram is already drawn, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For how many seconds should we run? Figure those things out. Those are not very difficult to understand. Okay, and uh, how many of you don't have MATLAB due to electricity or laptop problems? One or two people, right? Sir, I don't have laptop, sir. Are any computer? Okay, so one or I two. I do not have laptop access, sir. Yeah. So yes, I have. Do you have a word, mobile with a camera and okay. pen and paper? Yes, sir. So do whatever they are doing yes, by yes. hand. Still very easy. Even easier than what they have to do. Do the same yes, task by hand. Take the picture. Just send the picture directly with your student ID. Upload it in Google Classroom, obviously. Okay. Two pic, uh, two photos of right, or if you do it in one page, then one photo doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. one more thing the classroom task on page 4 that is given as the classroom task i'm not giving it as the task for today's lab but it's important you should try it at home okay
if any of you did not understand the question now is the time to ask because otherwise the time will run out so i hope everyone everyone understood sir uh, we are to uh, show it by uh, using the uh, let's block right sir lti block only yes i mean do the same thing but not in the time domain in the laplace domain so in the like the previous block diagram not this one so so why do we need simulating otherwise how will you have the block diagram and the step response from simulink if you don't use simulink sir transfer function is output by input right yeah oh let me stop the record